Ladies and gentlemen, my name's Paul, and in this RedGamingTech.com video, we're going to be discussing and analysing tech news, which, as usual, has popped up in the past 24 or so hours. I was originally going to have Amy cover today's video uh, while I worked on some other stuff, some scripts, but so many cool pieces of news uh, were circulating today, including a couple of discoveries I found on Sysoft Sandra, that really I just kind of wanted to discuss this stuff with you myself. So here we go. We're going to begin with Intel and the 400 series chipset and support for a new processor. And this comes to us via the 17.5.1.1021 Intel Rapid Storage Technology Driver. My favorite thing about that uh, version number is it's extremely easy to remember. So you're never going to forget that or need to Google it. Anyway, um, so this specific driver adds support for a new CFL-S82 uh, R0 CPU, and as I just mentioned a moment ago, the Intel 400 series chipset family. This is obviously Intel making a move towards uh, the launch of the new 400 series boards, as well as Comet Lake. Comet Lake, as you are probably aware by now, is going to be up to 20 uh, threads, 10 processor cores. And we'll also see a slight change in the socket. It's going to be 1,200 pins from what I've been told. Higher TDP and also possibly higher clock frequencies. Maybe a couple of other small changes like, for example, support for higher memory frequencies. That's what the rumors are. Um, and yeah, it's going to be really interesting to see how Intel positions various SKUs. Uh, as a very slight aside, I wouldn't be surprised if we see Intel... Uh, enable hyper-threading on a lot more processors and also enable overclocking for a lot more SKUs as well. That would be one of the better ways for them to compete against AMD. I'm not saying that they're going to be successful necessarily, but it would certainly go a long way to, uh, well, yeah, I mean, imagine if they only launched like a, a six-core processor without hyper-threading. It yeah, it just wouldn't make any sense in today's climate. So I suspect we're going to see hyper-threading in a lot more processes. Moving on, though, and another piece of Intel news. And this one is actually for the Glacier Falls platform. In fact, we have a couple of uh, things for the X299 slash Intel's HEDT. Uh, the first thing is from userbenchmark.com. And this specific uh, run is for the Intel... Glacier Falls um, platform. The processor isn't anything extravagant. It's only a single CPU uh, with 10 processor cores, 20 threads. The base frequency is kind of low. It's only 3.1 gigahertz with a turbo of 3.05 gigahertz. So the performance is a little bit anemic to be totally honest. But then again, if you also look at the memory configuration for this specific part, it's not exactly pushing the boat out either. The memory frequency is only running, running excuse me, at uh, 2666. So this is clearly like an early test and more of a, uh, you know, just is it going to explode? Is the BIOS working? That type of thing. Rather than trying to really push the performance up and trying to squeeze the maximum out of it. So this is more like trying to find bugs in the processor, finding out compatibility, making sure that the boards are okay and that type of thing rather than really trying to get the most out of the system. And this actually ties in very nicely with another story, and this is from uh, ithome.com. Uh, I believe this is a Chinese website, but um, this one's really cool because it has a story that's floating around that basically we're going to be seeing a new motherboard from Asus. It's an Asus X299 uh, prime board it's uh, the 30th edition and apparently according to them there's going to be a whole plethora of uh, board features including improvements in vrm cooling there's going to be you know uh, just yeah the board's just going to be completely and utterly decked out and tripped out the reason i find this so interesting is because it home uh, tell us that the board will launch in either september or october and this tells us up very well with another story that I covered a couple of days ago that Intel and AMD would be launching new products in October. Now if you recall September for AMD is already taken care of because of the 3950X launch. With Intel it's ambiguous. I mean technically it could be Comet Lake 
but most likely it's going to be cascade lake uh, so yeah i assume that these boards are in preparation for cascade lake and there's going to be some tweaks to the designs and other bits and pieces now we'll move on to amd because golly gosh there's a lot of amd news um the first piece will be CompuBench and yet another RDNA graphics card. This is uh, so far being referenced as GFX 1012 with the ID of 67DF colon F2, which isn't really an ID that you would necessarily associate with Navi, but it does appear that this is a Navi based GPU. Uh, it was actually Kamichi on Twitter who found this particular entry. So the specifications for this specific entry are kind of low. The number of compute units is only 12, which is certainly on the low side. But you must remember, with CompuBench, it doesn't actually uh, calculate the number of compute units correctly. So that's actually 24 compute units total. 1900 megahertz for the... Uh, core frequency and also a grand total of four gigabytes of memory. This seems very close to the entry that Amy Sasha Amata covered a few days ago. So it, there's yet more of these test uh, uh, test piece of silicon floating around. And now we will move over to AMD's processors. So the first entry that uh, I want to bring to your attention is actually the third generation Threadripper processors. Now this particular entry is on once again the user benchmark database and the system is registered, uh, sorry, uh, recognized as Sharktooth. The motherboard is AMD Whitehaven OCCP and it is running with a grand total of 64 gigabytes of memory. It's running at the resolution of 4K and the entry dates today, well, that's the 24th of July, if you happen to be watching this in a few days' time, with the operating system being Windows 10, and the user in question being located in China. So this particular processor has uh, the identifier, it's incredibly helpful, of 100, lots of zeros, 11, 12. AMD obviously have been obfuscating their processor IDs recently anyway, so seeing something like this doesn't particularly make much of a difference. It's a single processor. It's a single processor with 16 cores, 32 threads. So it is not one of the highest end uh, TR SKUs. It's even lower in specification than what we currently have with the 2000 series. Nevertheless, the processor is operating at a base frequency of 3.6 gigahertz, with a turbo frequency that was reached of. 4.05 gigahertz so 4050 megahertz you can see the scores yourself but obviously because this is not necessarily not necessarily excuse me representative of final clock frequencies you can take them with perhaps a slight pinch of salt the rest of the specifications of the system don't particularly matter in terms of the gpu and the drives but what does matter is we see there are four sticks of memory in this particular system so there are four of eight slots which are filled up uh, so that gives a grand total of 64 gigabytes of memory obviously four times 16 equals 64 maths are complicated but the memory is only running at 1600 megahertz so there's a couple of ways you can interpret the memory the first is that they are basically doing this because they're testing things or it was whatever board they had and so that's the only reason that we're seeing a quad channel configuration. Remember, there has been a lot of speculation that we could see rather than quad channel memory, we could see six memory channels or what have you, in other words, just an increased number of memory channels. But this would seem to indicate that maybe not, maybe AMD are going to stick to just four memory channels. And personally, I think that's likely the logical way for AMD to go. Uh, I've not heard anything from my source on that. I'm trying to find out. But the reason I wouldn't be surprised if it's only four memory channels is it would make sense in terms of segmenting the uh, product offering compared to Epic. Uh, actually, we'll go into some Epic stuff in a moment. But I, I suspect that if they had the same number of memory channels and the same amount of bandwidth and I.O. and everything else as Epic, 
It's like, well, yeah, it would really eat into the lower end Epic uh, processor sales, and I, I don't necessarily know if AMD would want to do that. With that said, though, uh, there have been an awful lot of rumors that the 500 series boards or the X599 boards are also getting kind of close to release as well, and that would make sense because obviously, even if they still only have quad channel memory for the next generation of Threadripper processors. Well, yeah, you still need PCIe 4 and other bits and bobs. So I wouldn't be surprised if uh, we only see quad channel memory. Regardless, though, this uh, performance of this processor is pretty impressive if you compare it um, to a 2950X. Uh, obviously, the 2950X does have one benefit, and that is its uh, final processor. But you can get uh, 2950Xs with a single core performance of around 125, 127 points. So this is a little bit higher. I will say though the user be uh, benchmark database is not necessarily the best benchmark in the history of humanity. Uh, obviously the, the 50X is also a uh, 16 core 32 thread processor. Uh, the multi-core score for the 50X is uh, 2476 points quite frequently. Uh, so basically it is a little bit faster with this CPU, but who knows if this is going to be the final clock uh, final clock frequencies for the third generation of Threadripper. Although if we look back in the history of the uh, 2000 series, the 2950X uh, has a maximum boost frequency of 4.4 GHz, uh, which is 100 MHz higher than the uh, 20x, uh, the base frequency of both of those processes is identical at 3.5 gigahertz. The uh, 70wx, meanwhile, has a boost frequency of 4.2 gigahertz with a base frequency of 3 gigahertz, and that same clock frequency is also for the 90wx as well. So who knows how the clock frequencies for the third generation CPUs uh, is going to split. One of my sources has told me we will actually see up to 64 processor cores for the third generation CPUs. This was one of the sources that was very reliable in the past. They actually uh, gave me even the July 7th release date for the uh, Ryzen 3000 series and also the RDNA graphics cards. If you recall, I actually leaked that way back in the day before the CPUs uh, came to market. So that source has been very reliable in the past. So they were the one who told me that it could be up to 64 cores. In fact, they were very certain it was going to be up to 64 cores. But it's possible that they did say that uh, AMD may launch the higher end SKUs a bit later, much like they did with the Ryzen 3000 series. Obviously, we see the 3950X is coming to market a little after the uh, other processors, such as the 3700 and so on. So it's going to be really interesting to see actually what AMD charges in terms of the pricing for these. So now we're going to move over to AMD's Rome processors, which are the company's next generation server slash high performance computing processors. They are, of course, also based on the Zen 2 processor core. Back in April of this year, there was an entry which was discovered on Sysoft Sandra for a 64 core 128 thread engineering sample processor although it had fairly low clock frequencies it was running at just 1.4 gigahertz for the base frequency and the boost frequency was up to 2.2 gigahertz but last month a number of processors uh, specifications leaked online including the epic 7742 with 64 cores 128 threads and a maximum boost frequency of 3.4 gigahertz and a TDP of 225 watts. Obviously, there were also lower end configurations available too, uh, going all the way down to just eight processor cores and 16 threads with a boost clock of 3.2 gigahertz. Clearly, the TDP, along with how much you were willing to spend, were going to have a rather large impact in the number of processor cores and clock speeds available to you but obviously the maximum boost clock uh, is going to also depend upon the number of active processor cores in the machine at that specific time 
but obviously this is a leaked list and it doesn't necessarily equate to a product that was going to launch or at least an accurate list of products that we're going to launch. Well, good news is now we've actually seen this specific uh, process in the wild or at least a version of one of these processes. Uh, Sysoft Sandra now has Epic 7H12 64-core processor, which, guess how many threads that is. That's right, 201. You got it. Anyway, uh, 128 threads with a base frequency of 1.5 gigahertz and a turbo frequency of 3.3 gigahertz. The rest of the specifications in terms of the cache make exact sense. I mean, 64 times 512 kilobytes, obviously each processor core has 512 kilobytes of level 2 cache. 16 times 16 megabytes of level 3 cache, which makes sense with how Sysoft Sandra reads the uh, cache of the um, processors. The performance of these processors is absolutely just monstrous. There's nothing else you can really say that uh, would describe the performance of these CPUs. It's just absolutely ridiculous. But then again, it is 64 processor cores, 128 threads. So what else did you really expect when you crank them up to this type of clock frequency and ask them to do a specific task? Turns out it's kind of fast. Um, there's also another very interesting entry on Sysoft Sandra as well. And I discovered this uh, this morning and this result ID is for AMD Starship device 24 function 0. Uh, so obviously we've heard of Starship for some time now. So it's nice that we're actually getting a reference of it in uh, Sysoft Sandra. And I was also speaking uh, about this to uh, Kamichi on Twitter via some DMs. So we'll keep an eye on this to see what the entries are like and what actually happens uh, regarding the next generation Rome platform. It's going to be really interesting over the next year to see how Intel and AMD kind of square off and what happens to the market shares of both companies. Uh, so yeah, it's it's a really cool time in computing, basically. Uh, with all of that said though, hopefully you've enjoyed the video. If you did, then like, share, comment and subscribe. But I'm going to let you all go. So take care. Bye for now.